Hi, good evening. I want to take a chance. I'm driving to answer some questions. You know what? Before I do that, i got to show you this view right now. I don't know how many of you will be able to see this or not, but hopefully you can see that sunset that I'm looking at. I'm driving out of my community right now, but God is good. Take a look at this. Hopefully I can show you. Does it show you? Look at that. Hopefully you can see that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Sunsetting right over the ocean. Not bad. Anyway, um, I want to take a minute and just answer a couple of the questions that I keep getting on Twitter and my uh, uh, on my uh, website, etc., Facebook, all that stuff. So, one of the big questions I get asked about lately is mentors. How do I feel about them? And um, how do you get one? What do you do with one? I, I love the idea. I wouldn't be wherever I am in my life, wherever it is that I am right now. I wouldn't be here without my mentors and my uh, my coaches. And so, I'm a huge fan of of that whole concept and believe completely in the principles of it. One thing I would tell you about that though is I see too many people have too many of them, especially if you're in one of these businesses where you got access to lots of different leadership and you know uh, retreats and seminars and all those kinds of things. My firm has that and. That's great to have multiple, get lots of information. Everybody comes at it from a different perspective, and you can pick up tips and information from everybody. But a mentor, you should have one. And uh, they may change over time as you grow, but I'd have one person because that's an intimate relationship. They have a lot of influence on you. And so I'd challenge you to find one and listen to them as your mentor. You can get coaching and tips and information, but in terms of real mentoring, real sculpting of your character of your identity and all those things, I recommend to you that you have one of them. And so what I want to talk to you about though is the principles in doing it. One, one thing I want to share with you is the idea that proximity is power. Don't forget that. The closer somebody is to you, the more influence they have over you. The case in point is your kids. You know, I have kids, one's in high school, one's going to be in high school soon. And you know, they've got five or six teachers a day. That's kind of like the people that you go to seminars or webinars with. They're giving you tips. They're certainly teachers have a huge influence over our children. They sculpt them, they guide them, they educate them. Um, they correct them when they need to. They believe in them. And they're tremendous influence over our children. Just like these people are that could be your, you know, uh, seminar hosts or, or retreat hosts. Having said that though, who has the biggest influence over our kids? right? They're friends. And that's why we're so careful about who they hang around because their friends are with them all the time. They're closer to them. They're with them at recess. They're with them in multiple classes, weekends, Instagram, texting, you name it. And so the proximity of their friends is what gives them power to influence them. And so if that's true with friends, that's true with mentors as well. It's almost like a magnet, right? That a magnet from a distance has one pull power, but the closer the object gets to the magnet, the more force it has to pull it towards it, the more power it has. And so why do I tell you all that? I tell you all that because I would pick one mentor and I would try to get close to them over time. See, the highest form of influence is friend. And so usually when it starts out and you want to get a mentor, it's somebody you'd like to be like in a particular area of your fitness, your faith, your finances, the business you're with, whatever it is. And so the first thing I do is you got to make contact with them and let them know you seek their mentorship. And at first that's awkward. You know, you don't know each other. You're at different stages of life oftentimes, different places. But it's coming upon you to continue to work on that relationship. Pursue it. And as they give you coaching and you follow it, I think you can find that that, that first contact you make can become an association. And there's some influence there. And then from association, it can move to friend over time. And my great mentors have become my friends. That's when they really influenced me. Some of them have become like brothers or sisters, and then we influence one another. The law of reciprocity kicks in because we're bringing value to one another, and you've got a wonderful relationship that's mutually beneficial. But my point being that you've got to work on the relationship to take it from contact to association to friendship. And the way you do that is that when they give you coaching and guidance, you actually go do it. You can't just say, be my mentor, and someone does it. That's not fair. You have to earn that. And the way you earn that is when they give you specific things to go do, and you do them, and you grow and mature, that association can become a relationship, and then it can move into become a friendship. And so, because why? Because people like people like them. Most people's friends are like them. And so the more and more you become like your mentor and do the things they ask you to do, the more and more you can move into that friendship position with them. And then you've got a, they've got a real influence and that proximity is there to have power over you. And so my point to you today is find a mentor and work as hard as you can on doing the things they ask you to do so that you can move into a position where you become friends with them. And it's only then that they have great influence over you is when your mentor becomes your friend.